Heyo, and welcome to Mr. Hodge's tips and tricks uh, for teachers, ed uh, parents, tutors, and students alike. Um, today I want to talk about the Ottawa Public Library because they have so many resources and things to offer, and a lot of people don't know about all the things that they offer. So I want to review the resources they offer, uh, what's available, um, and kind of how to use uh, their website a little bit. Um, so let's just jump right in. You're going to be amazed, I promise. So I'm going to go to Focus Mouse, -da, and we're going to go first here. So here we are. This is the basic website. This is where their main page, where you arrive. Um, over to the side, we can see their events. Right now it says online events. Where did my pen go? There we are. Uh, right now it says online events, but uh, they, they have lots of in-person events post-COVID. Um, and a whole bunch of other information on books and stuff. Um, so, next, ah, back, back, just back. I don't know why the mouse doesn't just stay focused. All right, here we go. So they offer a lot of services, as I mentioned. Um, and if you type services and then just go to general services, um, it'll take you to this page and it shows you, obviously they have public Wi-Fi and the computers for people to use. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. There's a genealogy, uh, which includes subscriptions to different services, um, that you wouldn't have otherwise, uh, stuff to help in new businesses, uh, people who, who are new. Um, and then this one here, uh, library one-on-one. And this is something, uh, when I was researching, I actually just found, um, so here, you can actually sign up with the library um, to have a one-on-one, one-on-one, 30-minute consultation about various things, about learning how to use the computer, about how to use eBooks, which are available, by the way, um, to uh, you know get book suggestions, research help, um, databases, um, whatever you need which is a really great resource. I mean, I always tell my students, sometimes they complain and they say, well, I don't know what to read or I, I like this book, but I don't know what else. And they don't realize that the librarians at our library are a fantastic resource. They're always there to give suggestions and help you find whatever you need and whatever you'd like to learn or use uh, at the library. All right, we talked about that. Oh, so this is another thing I want to talk about here access passes so our library subscribes to a bunch of different places and gives out tickets and passes to those places um, for people to to borrow um, so a lot of these are museums but there's a lot of other ones so there's uh there's a bunch of museums there's the art gallery um i think that they, they had a city of ottawa ski pass uh parks a vehicle permit so they have a lot of really, really cool um, things you can use there for free. Um, and the, the places that use these passes are absolutely wonderful. Um, for example, we borrowed, um, my, my wife and I borrowed one of the museum passes. And when we were in line, the pass is actually for a family and includes uh, uh, two parents and uh, two children. Um, and, and there was a family behind us. We don't have kids. It was We were just using it for us. But we asked, we said, hey, could we include the two kids behind us as part of our package so that they didn't have to pay? And they were absolutely said yes, that, that they could do that. Um, keep in mind, museums are, are free. Uh, well, post-pandemic, post they're free um, one, at least once a week. So half of them are free every day at a certain time. Half of them are free at a certain time on Thursdays only. Um, but it's awesome. You just go into the library, you get, it's like in a CD case, and you get a free access to these amazing resources around the city. Um, if they have special, um, yeah, it might not, You if you have to pay extra at the museum to see like a certain exhibit, it might not, um, might not allow you to get in. Um, also, there's uh, a limited amount, so you do have to get there kind of when they're put on the shelf. I don't think you can reserve them like you can the other product or items, um, but we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. And we already talked about those. Oh, this is another big one I want to talk about before we get into some of the cool 
items that they have. So they do have in certain locations what's called their Imagine Space and Labs. Um, obviously, COVID has kind of put a damper on that. Um, but they have the Imagine Space, they have the Digital digital Lab, Music Editing Lab, um, and those are the big ones. So, um, so we have the Music Editing Lab, which is cool if you want to like make a song or whatever. Um, the Digitalization Lab, I don't know much about that one. But this one here, the Imagine Space is really cool. It has a 3D printing, it has laser cutting, uh, photo video editing, the green screen, uh, tools, whiteboards like that cover the wall. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you do have to do a bit of a training course, uh, but pretty much they're running it at cost. Uh, you know, just because like if you're doing 3D printing, you gotta you gotta pay for the the gel I think that goes in the machine. But I mean, come on, the technology itself is is amazing. Um, so it's it's really amazing. I highly recommend you go and take a look whenever it opens up. Um, and then you just go to hours and locations up here, and then you click on the Imagine Space and Labs. Okay. Um, they also have some other really cool things here. The Ottawa Room, I think it's like history about Ottawa. Um, anyways, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. There's the Ottawa Room, which I think is, oh, I already mentioned that. Um, here it is. Um, the Bookmobile which I think is just like, I've never used it because I have a, um, I have a, a location close to me, but basically um, it drives around the city and just stops at random locations, not random because they're listed here, but, um, and gives people access to the, uh, to books and the services rather than having to go into a physical location. All right, now, I want to get in more into the actual tools like books that they have. Obviously, a lot of you guys know that they have um, they have books, obviously, uh, as any library has for a long time. But if I pull this up, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that the library has. They have books, they have movies, videos, uh, music, music on CD, uh, newspaper subscriptions, magazine subscriptions, musical, physical musical instruments. So you can borrow a violin. Um, a guitar, those kind of things. Um, uh, well, online resources have lots of tools. Gaming, they have uh, lots of video games that you can actually take out and play in return. Um, they even have, a, I think, three telescopes um, that that you can you can use. And what we do is we're going to go up to here, and let's say we want the telescope. We type in telescope. And we click search or we click enter. Here we go. Um, so that's a movie. We have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, here you go. So these are, it'll actually tell you, first of all, this is the name of the thing. And this is the um, subtitle or oftentimes the, the author. And this is, it kind of tells you what the item is. And that's its code if you were in the library trying to find the book. Um, or if you're an annoying person like me, you can just ask the, ask the, uh, librarian or i just put it on hold and then i don't have to worry about it um and we'll talk about that in a second these are the ratings you can actually like rate books and items when you take them out and say what you liked about them what you didn't put comments but if we go down this is their actual device so they have three at different uh locations one at the cumberland one at beaver brook and one at uh stittsville okay so, uh, oh they have four sorry and one at, at uh Ruthie uh, Dickinson. Um, you can click on them now and actually place a hold. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of holds, 183 on the one device, um, which is a little unfortunate. But if you have a car, definitely there's 23 on this one. So, uh, you know, you'll eventually get it. And it comes with everything you need. It comes in a kit. It comes with instructions how to use it. It's absolutely fantastic. Would 100% recommend. Um, instruments, same thing. Let's say we wanted to buy it. Hold in. I'm terrible at a spelling. See, it's going to help me out. And, uh, there's books, 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 books. There's music. Ah, just say, let's go to full size. Just say, there you go. There's the actual musical instrument. Again, 44 holds on 44 copies. Um, 
but yeah, you can actually go and borrow one and give it a try. See how you like it. Um, it has five out of five stars, so I'm pretty sure you will like it. Um, and here there are some other features. So you can place a hold and you can also put it on your for later shelf um, or your completed shelf if you want to reference it for later. Um, so let's see how to actually book and some of the features that the library now has. What you're going to do, you're going to start by logging in. You'll have to do that anyway, so you might as well do it. Uh, you put in your stuff, log in. It already knows me, so I don't have to worry about showing you guys my password. And here you go. So I'm logged in. You can go down here, and I'm going to move my face out of the way. Uh, these are the items that I currently have checked out. Those that are on hold, my borrowing history, you do have to activate that. It will not automatically track the books that you've read. Um, I wanted to just because sometimes I return things and, and then I go back and try to think of what book I had taken out. Um, and any fees, uh, there's no late fees. There's no late fees anymore, I believe. Um, but if you do get a fee, like you damaged the book or something, you can actually pay it online now. You have your for later shelf completed in progress, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's the smart pay for fees or for copies and, and whatnot. Uh, books, bookings and, and whatnot. This is actually uh, interlibrary loan. So you can actually try to get something from another library and ask them to, to bring it in. If I go to on hold, you're going to see some of the books that I have waiting, that I'm waiting to get. All right, so there's some video games there. There's some different books. Um, I'm a, as you know, I'm a teacher, so I have a lot of uh, children's books that I like to read in advance to see how I could use them and if I like them. It will tell you, uh, so it tells you, first of all, what stage you're in. Um, you determine where you want to pick it up. So that's my branch, Hazel Dean branch, and when it will expire. Now, I am currently waiting for that book in line, and as when um, it comes up uh, as ready for me, I'll get an email notification uh, when it, it's actually arrived at the library and is waiting there for me to just drive in and pick it up. Um, but I can tune in anyways. It'll tell me when it's on tran in transit, um, coming to the library. If I go away on vacation, or maybe I just have like so many books that I want to read that I have like tons on hold and I can't possibly read them all, I can actually click this button, pause, hold. And I can say from today until, let's say I'm going away for two weeks, 23rd, pause, hold. And what this is gonna do, I hope it doesn't move my book. Ah, oh, it did. Just that, I have to go find it again. There. Uh, so now you see it's paused, because um, it always it always puts them in order, uh, by the way, of um, books that are coming uh, like the soonest kind of thing. Um, so it's on hold now. It's paused until this date. After that, it's just going to automatically go back in the list. But what else will happen if I'm like 23 on, let's say there's three copies, it's still going to move me up. But what will happen is that when it gets to the end and I'm number one, it will let other people butt in front of me until I'm ready to take the book back. It's kind of like being at the grocery store and your mom has to go get one more item. And so you get to the front of the line and then you just let people pass you until you're ready, right? It's that kind of thing. Um, now, when, if I'm ready early, I can resume the hold, which is what I'm gonna do. And it's gonna move on me again. It's gonna go back up here. Let's go to this book here. Um, this is actually a suggestion uh, that I got on the main page. And I can actually Cancel my hold too if I decide that I don't actually want to read it anymore. All right. Uh, do watch because when they arrive, you have a certain amount of days. And then if they have to re uh, put it back on the shelf, like you never came to pick it up, uh, then you will have to pay a restocking fee. All right. So make sure that when it shows up, you're able to go and get your book uh, or whatever item you borrow. So as you can see, lots of resources at the library, lots of fantastic ways to borrow books. I love this on hold feature because you don't have to go and look and hope that it's there. Uh, for many items, you can just put it on hold and when it's ready, they'll send an email saying, hey, it's ready, come pick it up. Um, and I love that if I'm in the summertime, I'm looking at lots of books, I can 
put them on hold. And then when, if, if the school year starts up and I just don't have enough time to read, I can put them on hold for the whole school year and come back to them in, in the summer when I have more time. Uh, also, if you ever want to borrow a book, but they don't have it, you can always request in some cases that they will per to purchase it. And I've done that before and they've purchased the book. Uh, the only thing with that is that I didn't get first dibs on the book and I forgot that I did it. So when I went back to look, a lot of other people had also wanted the same book. So I did have to wait a little bit, but it's still better than paying for the book outright. So um, enjoy the library, enjoy its many resources and uh, have a great time. Bye.